Good morning, Calvary. My name is Patrick, and today I have the opportunity to share with you my journey to freedom in Christ. Now, if you're watching this video with young ears in the room, I want you to know that you might want to screen it and save it for a little bit later because it's going to contain some mature content. My life story begins in the rural South, right in the middle of the Bible Belt. I grew up the son of a Southern Baptist preacher. My parents took me to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday for prayer meeting. Since most of my years were spent living right next door to the church in the parsonage, I really and quickly became good at living up to the expectations that other people placed on me as the preacher's kid, at least outwardly. I made a profession of faith when I was really young, about eight years old or so, and I got baptized not very long after that. I wouldn't realize until later, though, that I had not fully grasped what it meant to truly surrender myself completely to Christ. Not long after that, around nine years old, I was innocently exposed to pornography at a friend's house during a sleepover, and it altered the course of my life forever. That initial encounter sparked a curiosity that quickly became an easy escape from reality. Fast forward quite a few years, I went through school, I got an education, I married my high school sweetheart, and I began a career as a healthcare provider. I also started a family. I did all the things that a man's supposed to do as he pursues the American dream. Unfortunately for me, it was more like living in a nightmare. You see, on the outside, just like all those years I grew, while I was growing up in the church, it seemed like I had my life together. Even my wife thought that she'd married a good Christian man and really had no idea about any of the baggage that I brought into our relationship. She and my kids would end up paying the price for my selfishness though, unfortunately. You see, what had begun as a problem with pornography eventually, eventually spiraled way out of control and it led to multiple affairs and later full-blown sex addiction. And you know, nobody around me had a clue. I was still going to church, but I was trapped in a cycle of shame, guilt, and escape. I was living two different lives. You know, and then I thought, Maybe moving out of state might fix my problems. A fresh new start and a new city, I'd fix all my problems, right? Of course, that's not true. You know, my addiction followed me all the way out here to Arizona. It was here that I discovered that California cannabis didn't give me the hangover that the whiskey I'd been drinking at night in Arkansas did. And it did a better job of numbing the pain of my guilt, too. I quickly became an everyday user, and my life fell apart pretty fast. You know, the consequences of all these choices, they snowballed, and I found myself in a deep depression. I was suicidal, and I had even made a plan to end my life. You know, of course, I was still going to church like a good Christian should, and I even started playing guitar with the worship team here at Calvary. Fortunately for me, our worship pastor, Jesse, had taken a personal interest in my well-being. He could tell that something wasn't quite right and suggested that I go check out so Celebrate Recovery. I politely refused, you know, since I'm not one of those people. But thankfully, he did not stop encouraging me to go. When I finally relented, I went for three weeks. And every time I went, I felt more and more convicted for the way that I had been living. I felt an undeniable pull toward God, and I knew that what I was doing wasn't working. I was fully aware that I did not belong to him and that my life was a complete disaster. But you know, God showed me a way out. Even after my sinfulness had taken me all the way to rock bottom. You see, it turns out that my life began exactly at the point where my selfishness ended. The night after my third meeting I attended, I told God that I couldn't do this anymore that he could have my life, I would give him everything I had if he would just fix it. And you know, he's held up his end of the promise. And ever since that night, my life has not been the same. You know, I kept going to meetings. I found myself in a in-depth 12-step study. And you know, Celebrate Recovery really gave me the framework that I needed to look inside and identify the character defects that were holding me back from living the life that God had intended for me to live all along. 
And you know, now I'm able to live transparently. I don't have to wear a mask anymore. I, uh, not just a COVID mask either, uh, an act, uh, you know, the mask of, of uh, two lives. I can just be my authentic self all the time because I'm not hiding anything anymore. And I know that my true identity is in Christ. You know, in my recovery journey, it's been messy. It hasn't been, it hasn't, it's not been perfect. There's been, there's been bumps in the road. Coming clean caused me to hurt a lot of people, especially the people that I love the most. But you know, God's preserved my family and he's healed my marriage. But the, mo the most incredible thing of all is he's turned my shameful addiction into a testimony of redemption. You know, now I have the honor of serving as a sponsor and a leader in Celebrate Recovery. I get to help men just like me overcome the shame of addiction. Now, listen, I want you to know, I know pornography and sex addiction are not the easiest things to talk about. But you see, it's this discomfort that really feeds the shame that comes along with these issues. They're really common. You know, even though it's uncomfortable, it's undeniable that our culture is right in the middle of an epidemic of sexual sin. You know, and, and I take great comfort in knowing that God has freed me, and I know that He's freed me so that I can talk about this stuff openly. Now, if you can relate to this, I want you to know that you're not alone. Come check us out at Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights at 6.30 at our Sweetwater campus. There's hope in Christ, and there's freedom in surrender.